To our Polinian graduates, parents, families, and administration, faculty, and staff, good afternoon. Today marks these very unique graduation ceremonies for you and for the school. For you, dear graduates, and your parents, we understand you have been anticipating this moment for many years. From the first time you stepped into this institution up to the last months leading to your final exams, and from the last day of classes up to this very day of our virtual graduation ceremony. We understand that our decision to postpone our graduation have caused you some disappointment as well as anxiety and concern. We are as sad that our school's year-end graduation plans and multiple opportunities to celebrate your crowning achievements are being impacted by these current challenges. But confronting challenges is nothing new to us. Allow me to take you back to some challenging and overwhelming events in our school's history. In November 1991, the school campus then located in Mabini Street was severely damaged by the flash flood brought about by Typhoon Uring. At that time, we were only 10 years old as a school. Our physical structures ceased to exist as everything was washed away by the raging flood waters. Some of our teachers and staff were trapped in one of the classrooms and had to climb to the roof to seek higher ground. With the severe losses we sustained, no one ever thought we can cooperate and rise again. But we simply refused to surrender. After three months, we were up and running. That experience taught us foremost that nothing can extinguish the indomitable spirit once you put your heart and soul into serving others. On November 8, 2013, another disaster struck or mock. Super Typhoon Yolanda damaged 70% of the school's physical structures. In five hours, our roofs were blown away by the devastating winds and along with them, years of hard work and precious resources. Again, we refused to be defeated and lost no time to build back better. A mantra that served as our guide to design more resilient school structures. After three weeks, we were able to reopen the school and conduct alternating class schedules. Last March 15, we closed down the school upon government orders to preserve the health and well-being of the school community. Three months after, while communities worldwide cope with the effects of lockdowns and quarantines that has affected our way of living, we refuse to be down and beaten. Our reason, learning cannot stop. Our students need us now more than ever to listen to them and to engage with them. Similarly, we need to fulfill in them the need for socialization and a sense of connection among their peers. We have to continue working on our gains so that our students are productive and continue acquiring knowledge and skills to, end to ensure foremost that their mental health and well-being are being addressed. Much has been said about reopening schools. Emotions have been running high with comments in different media platforms. So we were in quarantine and working from home, our school leadership team were otherwise preoccupied, evaluating our available resources and drawing our school readiness plan. It is not lost on us that great challenges have proven significant opportunities for the school's growth and advancement. This time, however, we will harness the use of technology and flexible learning options 
both online and offline instruction to deliver learning to our students. All it takes is determination, perseverance, and creativity to make the necessary adjustments to embrace the shift to distance learning. Definitely all is not lost. It is within our power to choose to make the most of what we have. And believe me when I say we do. We have a committed and dedicated teaching and non-teaching staff who tirelessly work beyond the confines of traditional teaching. In fact, I am proud that among all the private institutions in Ormoc City, we are the first to roll out our online enrollment system. As of today, our learning management system, which we have been using since 2012, has been updated, complete with all the functions needed by our students. And while it may not be possible to go to a library to research, our online library will allow our students to access reliable information. As Polinians, we have always chosen to look beyond the challenges and focus on the endless possibilities. One of the greatest advantages is access to world-class training for our teachers who are experts on distance learning, student evaluation, and designing learning modules with the art of pedagogy embedded into it are now possible without the need for us to travel. We cannot count the number of webinars we have attended and we continue to do so in the interest of self-improvement. Our students will now have access to learn from others in a global scale. It will not be limited to what we can experience here and now. We can learn from the valuable experiences from other people who can bring more meaning to our lives. My dear graduates, your education should never stop despite this global pandemic. Now more than ever, you are called to be learned individuals as much as you can and to help find solutions to our community's pressing concerns. From a simple task as helping out whenever you can in your family business, or taking care of the environment, or learning new skills even while on quarantine. These past few months afforded me some time to go through some updates about our former students. And I am proud that among these are inspiring stories of our own Polinians who are making a difference in their own way. Meet Dr. Marie Creel Tasha Pantino, class valedictorian of Batch 2006 who is now working as a physician at St. Luke's University Health Network, specializing in endocrinology. Another Polinian, Dr. Lois Marie Escalon of Batch 2003, now a diplomate in internal medicine and works in Cebu Doctors University Hospital. In public service, we have the very energetic mayor of Kananga, Mayor Matt Torres of Batch 1993, who is now making waves in leading his municipality upward and onward. In the arts, we have Mr. Benjun Pore of Batch 2006, a visual artist now based in Ormoc City who is carving a name for himself in advocating for the arts as a medium of instruction, culture, and tradition. Just recently, I read this post about Mr. Jester Zacarias of Elementary Batch 2000, who now works at the Ormoc City Health Department in, and is assigned as a nurse at the Ormoc City Isolation Facility. I have also encountered some of our graduates who are helping in their own respective family businesses cope with product deliveries or office work during this quarantine. They who make us realize that our world will never run out of inspiration as long as we believe in the greatness of each and every one of us to contribute to society. 
To our Kinder 2 graduates, I imagine you right now, all beautiful in your dresses and very handsome in your barongs, making your parents and families very proud of you. Grade 1 awaits you with more adventures as you grow and develop into responsible children. To our Grade 6 graduates, as you step into junior high school, expect greater responsibilities. It will be an exciting time for you and your classmates, though you will be interacting differently when school opens this August. To the grade 10 completers, I am confident that we have prepared you for the challenges ahead. I won't promise you a walk in the park. There will be more tasks, but the learning and experiences shall develop you well for senior high school. To our grade 12 graduates, we were planning for a different ending to your senior year. In fact, you have started executing your plans. But you make us proud with your maturity and acceptance in dealing with our situation. College will be tough, but we have more than prepared you for it. To our Polinian parents and guardians, thank you for the continued trust and confidence in the school. Your encouraging words inspire us to continuously strive for excellence. To our department supervisors, teachers, and non-teaching staff, we have weathered many storms together as a family. It is my honor and privilege to work alongside with you throughout these years. Thank you for the love and care you devote to the teaching profession. You have my deepest respect and admiration. I know that many of you have successfully navigated challenging situations in the past. And while I am certain that this one is both historic and unique, I am confident that we will be resilient and that each of us will persevere. Before I end, I wish to remind all completers and graduates, go build a good life for yourself and your family. Help build a brighter future for all. Contribute to society. Contribute to the well-being of this planet. Always do the right thing even when no one is looking. Be courageous in the face of adversity. Be disciplined. Be principled. Be fair and be responsible. Uphold integrity at all times. Uphold professionalism. Be totally committed to everything you do. Don't just try. Get it done. Do it better today than yesterday and tomorrow better than today. Go and do the best in your chosen field. Continually expand your knowledge and hone your skills. Learn throughout life. Learn judgment from experience. Be a good friend. Be kind. Be compassionate to others. Honor your parents. Love our alma mater, our country, humanity, and our God. Once again, congratulations and good afternoon.